Hello, everyone, and welcome to Interfaith Worker Justices, Workers Memorial Day Interfaith Prayer Vigil. Thank you all so much for being on the call. Um, I am going to now introduce Reverend Troy Jackson, Executive Director at the Amos Project in Cincinnati, Ohio, and the Organizing Committee Chair on the IWJ Board. Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for this day and every day uh, that you bless us with. Lord, we, uh, we want to pray, particularly uh, a prayer of thanksgiving for those who go out and work hard every single day, sometimes in very dangerous uh, conditions, to provide for their families, to make our communities better, uh, to help our nation, our world, be all that we can be. Uh, Lord, we want to pray for your uh, presence and for your people to be a presence for families who have lost loved ones through on-the-job incidents. And uh, we ask that they would experience your presence, know you're with them, and that as communities of faith and clergy, we would work hard to be with and fight for workers who put so much on the line every single day. Uh, Lord, we, we're thankful for this time to simply remember and to celebrate and to honor those who work hard and uh, go through difficulties and sometimes even give their lives at the workplace. We pray that we would work tirelessly to make sure every worker is protected and has all they need to be safe and secure in the job place. Lord, guide our time together today. Amen. I mean. Thank you so much, Reverend. And, and now I will introduce Jeanette Smith, Director of South Florida Interfaith Worker Justice and member of the IWJ Board. Oh, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, gracias a todos para estar aquí. Um, my prayer is going to be in Spanish. Voy a estar en español. Padre nuestro, te damos gracias por las oportunidades que tú das a nosotros, por el trabajo que tú das a nosotros. Oramos por los trabajadores que están haciendo el trabajo tan duro en nuestra comunidad, en nuestro país. Muchas gracias por la palabra de Dios. Pedimos a uh, Dios, pedimos benedicciones para todos los trabajadores. Uh, no solamente los trabajadores que han caído en sus trabajos, pero también a los trabajadores que están haciendo el trabajo tan duro y con riesgos cada día. Los trabajadores que están dando oportunidades a todos. Te damos gracias por tu ayuda cada día. Ayudamos a confiar en ti. Tú sabes todo, Dios, y confiamos en ti. Gracias, Dios, por todo. En el nombre de Jesús Cristo. Amén. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Uh, I will now introduce Imam Taha Hassan, Imam of the Islamic Center of San Diego and a member of the IWJ board. Thank you so much. I uh, would like to start by greeting you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum all and peace be with you all. Um, once Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said to his companions, the best money or wealth you spend on yourselves and your families is the one that you earn with your work. Indeed, Prophet David provided his family from the work of his hands. So <clears throat> earning our living is a duty and honor, and showing respect and appreciation to the workers is an act of civility and perfect morality. Working to provide our families means choosing a dignified way to earn a living. So workers deserve respect and appreciation. My dear brothers and sisters, today we remember all those hardworking men and women who lost their lives at the workplace. We pray for them and their families. Also, we remember workers who are deprived from their basic rights 
at workplace. Victims of racism and discrimination. Victims of wage theft. Victims of sexual harassment and assault at workplace. As faith and spiritual leaders in our communities, one of our duties is to fight for the rights of our workers and stand in solidarity with them and support them when they claim their rights, to be their voice when they are scared to speak, to be their feet when they are scared to walk, and to be their hands when they are afraid to hold a sign demanding justice and fairness. Today we stand together to honor and bless our hardworking men and women in our communities, reaffirming our pledge to remain standing on their side, making sure that no worker and his or her family is left behind. For our workers, let's pray. Almighty God, the Lord of all that which exists, the one who sent all prophets with the divine teachings of peace, justice, and human dignity, we pray to you as we gather here this morning, affirming our full support to our workers to have fair contracts, respect, and dignity at workplace. Almighty God, you have taught us that the dignity of the human being is unquestionable. As you have said in the Quran, verily, we have honored the children of Adam, all mankind. We believe this honor must be reflected on the daily life of all of us, including our workers. So help us, Lord, to keep up the effort made to honor the hardworking people in their struggle and help us to be grateful to you for using us as your means and ways to bring about dignity and justice to our workers. Almighty God, bless us all and bless our work for justice. Bless our workers and give them strength to stand for their rights at workplace. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now we'll hear from Marianela Acuna Areza, Executive Director of Fe Justicia in Houston, Texas. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much uh, for making this space um, to take a minute to um, pray for workers, um, both um, the folks that um, died last year um, but also the folks that are still alive and kind of like recommitting to like protecting um, working families. Um, I wanted to um, tell you a little bit about some of the stories that we're going to uh, be hearing tonight in our event here in Houston. Um, and I wanted to, I guess, like lift up um, kind of like the situation that, you know, specifically in Texas um, we have with um, lack of safety um, in the workplace. Um, so in some of those stories, we have, um, we have Irving, we have Juana, um, and we have um, uh, Raimundo. Um, Irving is very recently, this, like maybe two months ago, uh, fell off a roof while he was working, um, and he broke his um, collarbone. Um, he has several fractures on his right arm uh, and like his elbow, kind of like the connection um, and one in his, uh, his left wrist. And he also uh, broke two of his vertebrae as well, fractured two of his vertebrae. He's, he's getting better. Uh, he survived the accident and we're glad for that. And we wanted to um, raise that story of like him being a survivor, but also like, raised the story of him being like so so close to um to being another fatality um that we see in Houston. We have two domestic workers, both Juana but also Maria, who um are actually survivors of human trafficking in Houston. Um they spend um like over ten years like captive in a home as like domestic workers in a suburb of Houston. 
Um, we were able to reach them and help them escape last year. Um, and they're kind of like broadening the understanding that we have of like safety at the workplace, that it's not just accident, but it's also this kind of like, like modern, um, modern day slavery um, and being able to survive that. And we have a worker who um, used to do like yard work, um, streaming uh, of like trees and, and others, but also like uh, more common like yard work, but he fell um, and he uh, had like a really, really bad spinal cord injury. And so he's in a wheelchair now and he um, organizes with this beautiful and wonderful organization called Living Hope Wheelchair Association. Um, and those are kind of like some of the stories that really root the, the work that we do uh, for safety and health um, in Houston. Um, and I think broadly in Texas, but specifically in Houston. Um, in Houston in the last year, um, sorry, in, in Texas in the last year, we know of uh, 527 um, fatalities at the workplace. Uh, and 92 of those happen in Houston, um, and eight of those workers were under 18 years old. Um, and most of the, um, we know that most of the uh, people that die at the workplace here in Houston are in the construction, manufacturing, and transportation industries. Um, and some of them are from like, um, yeah, like fatal like injuries, but some of them are related to like. Um, heat stroke during the summer uh, whenever it's so hot in Texas. Um, and we know also that it's um, not just coming from um, just like accidents that happen, but this is like uh, things that come from like the policies that we have. We're one of the only two states that don't have like workers' compensation. Um, and so even the people, you know, the survivors that are going to talk to us today and that are going to share their testimonies, neither of them had access to like workers' compensation. And so they had to, other than being um, suffering an injury, they also had to like, deal with like the cost of like being sick in a state that also doesn't have um, Medicaid expansion. Um, and then, um, yeah, and we also know that it's not only around uh, like access to healthcare and work, work, uh, work, uh, worker comp um, here, but it's also around like immigration and people being really afraid of asking um, or demanding their employers to like offer like safety trainings and like safety equipment. And so I think we the race of this issue, not just like thinking about about the workers that died and thinking about, you know, the workers that are still alive and that we want to keep so um, but also like really taking the moment to acknowledge that um, this doesn't come from just like accidents and coincidences and just like things that um, like mistakes that people make, but that it's like policy driven and that there's uh, people that are responsible for the places, um, for workplaces to be so unsafe. And that in a way we are responsible for that too. Um, and we have to keep uh, fighting for um, better protections in the in the workplace. Thank you so much, Mariana. Uh, now we will have Rabbi Rachel Contractor, Director of Programs at TrueX. Today, the prayer I'm going to offer today is the traditional Jewish prayer for mourning, which we say goes after someone has died and then on the anniversary of their death. So feels particularly appropriate to say um, when we are commemorating workers who died on the job. Um, it's really important to think about the fact that on one hand in Judaism, mourning is not a celebration. It is really a chance to feel pain and to reflect on the lives of people we've lost. At the same time, the, the mourner's Kaddish, the traditional Jewish prayer for those who have died, um, the root of the word Kaddish comes from holiness. We recognize that in remembering people who are doing holy work, both to honor their lives and to continue the work that they did, the holy work that they were doing in this world. So the other interesting piece about it is that the Jewish mourner's prayer doesn't mention death. It's a prayer of reaffirmation of faith in God. And that's an important lesson for us today, that as we hold this vigil together, 
that we affirm our commitment to the work, the strength that we draw from each other and from our faith traditions, and we use that strength to move the work forward and to broaden our movement, and to take the pain of remembering and turn it into the sacredness of shared action. This is the Mourner's Scottish. And it's in Aramaic, um, which was the prayer that the Jewish community said when it was wrote, which was the language that the Jewish community spoke, spoke when it was wrote, written. Thank you so much, Rabbi Rachel. Uh, and now we will have Ryan Wallace, former organizing director at IWJ and candidate for ministry at McCormick Theological Seminary. Hello, everyone. It's good to be with you in spirit today on a day that we remember our sisters and brothers who have died on the job. And to do justice to their memories, we must continue to fight. Because one more worker injured, one more worker dead because of an unsafe workplace is too many. If you're with me, say amen. So if we want to put an end to the grief of families and to the senseless deaths of our sisters and brothers who work alongside us, then we must ask ourselves, who will protect them and who will lead them? For many of us, our faith traditions use shepherds as a metaphor for leading the people. Shepherds are, of course, responsible for a flock of sheep, for assuring the well-being of their flock. And one of the most important duties of a shepherd is to protect their sheep from predators. According to the prophet Ezekiel in the Hebrew Bible, God commands that shepherds must strengthen the weak, heal the sick, and bind up the injured. When the predators in your workplaces and in your community seek to take advantage of workers, who will protect them? Who will organize them? In the Christian gospel, Jesus says that he is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He says when the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd and the sheep aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep. But the good shepherd, Jesus says, knows the sheep and they know him and he never abandons them. My friends, God has called you. God has anointed you to be shepherds of people in your workplaces and in your communities. When the predators come, whether they are the supervisors or ICE agents or someone else, when predators come to abuse or to harm or to take advantage of any sheep in your flock, I know you won't abandon them because the good shepherd knows their sheep and looks after them, because the good shepherd strengthens the weak, because the good shepherd stands by their flock, because the good shepherd fights back you are the good shepherds. Now go and lead your flock to justice. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ryan. And thank you all so much for being on this call today. This concludes Interfaith Worker Justice's Workers Memorial Day remote vigil. Um, Thank you all so much for being here with us.